Hi there. At the end of the last video, we had arrived at the inequality which is shown above here. And in contrast to that of Chebyshev, which told us that the probability that x equals 1 plus the probability that x equals 6 had to be less than or equal to a half, we've gone ahead and we've assumed that the probability is greater than a half. And what we're hoping to do here is we're hoping to find some sort of contradiction. Also, just to refresh your memory, we've assumed that the mean of the process x is 3.5 and the variance is 25 over 8. And we're absolutely free to do that. That's basically equivalent to specifying the probabilities of each of these different x's occurring. We also wrote down what the variance of x was. And sort of implicit here is that the variance of x is equal to the expected value of x minus mu all squared, namely the second centered moment. And we wrote it using our sort of rule for finding the expected value of a given function for a discrete random variable as this sort of sum over all x values here. Okay, so sort of continuing from this, we can write this out explicitly. So there are going to be six terms because there are six different x values which our random variable x can take on. So the sort of first term is going to be 1 minus 3.5 all squared times the probability that x equals 1. The second term is going to be 2 minus 3.5 all squared times the probability that x equals 2. And then we're going to sort of continue on up until we get to the last term. The last term is just going to be 6 minus 3.5 all squared times the probability that x equals 6. Okay, so even though we haven't specified these individual probabilities, we can say something about the variance of x. We can say something because of the fact that we know that probabilities are constrained to be between 0 and 1. So all these sort of intermediate probabilities, the probability that x equals 2 through to the probability that x equals 5, we know that they have to be greater than or equal to 0. So that means that we can write the variance of x as being greater than or equal to 1 minus 3.5 squared, namely sort of 2.5 squared, times the probability that x equals 1, plus 2.5 squared. Again, we get that from the sort of term on the probability that x equals 6, times the probability that x equals 6. And we can simplify this a bit, so we can write this as 2.5 squared times the probability that x equals 1, plus the probability that x equals 6. And we've already sort of made an assumption on the sum of the probability that x equals 1 plus the probability that x equals 6. We've assumed that that's greater than a half, which means that the variance of x has to be strictly greater than 2.5 squared, which is just 25 over 4, times a half namely the probability or rather the variance of x has to be greater than 25 over 8. I notice that we've got a contradiction here. We originally assumed that the variance of x was actually equal to 25 over 8, whereas now we've actually proved that if we assume the opposite of Chebyshev that we have a variance which is greater than 25 over 8. So Chebyshev's inequality can be sort of thought about in the same way that Markov's inequality is thought about in terms of expectations. Markov's inequality places a sort of upper bound on the probability that can be ascribed to a given value which our random variable can take on. Because if that random variable had a sort of higher probability of achieving that particular value, that would mean that the uh, actual expected value of x would actually shift up. And similarly with Chebyshev, Chebyshev places a maximum value on the probability of a sort of certain value occurring. Because if that probability was higher, that would mean that the variance would exceed that which we have assumed. So it sort of places an upper limit on the um, probabilities which um, ensure that the variance of x is actually what we assumed it to be. And it's not difficult to actually think about generalizing Chebyshev or sort of Markov to 
higher order dimensions or higher order um, moments, it's really not that much more difficult to prove those higher order moment conditions. You can use a very similar argument to the one which we've used here.